You på Vesterbro, Westbridge Christmas, episode 24, juleafslutning, and IMDb suggests in English it should be Christmas closure. I think it's closer to Christmas finale. Thoughts. So, yeah, spoilers for the entire show. Another episode I love, though I will criticize the offensive elements. And let's dive right in. So... I I like that the first thought, you know, when when they see Greta, it's like, is this about rent? I mean, certainly this is a very novel way to to approach that sub subject. You know, I I don't think you'll find that many landlords, bastards though they all are, who would actually put on Nazi regalia in order to to claim their rent and yeah there's some transphobia in how they discuss Ibrahim and yeah Greta goes off on this Nazi rant she picks up one of the hot dogs which just like oh my god looks so disgusting by now um so I guess it was a misdirect in an earlier episode when she turned down a hot dog because she is one, you know, at this point basically everyone has been offered a hot dog. Maybe not Randy, actually, come to think of it. She hasn't spent a lot of time in the garage and that's usually where that happens. But, but yeah. Um, and yeah. Greta's rant is called out for being complete madness several times, and I appreciate that Keithia gets the last word on that. Stuart says two things, and is about to say a third, and then Keithia finishes, uh, yeah. And the hot dog is so bad that she even dies from it. And... Which, you know, I'm, I'm always in favor of, you know, if, if we're, like, depicting, you know, fictional Nazis to have them you know, humiliated in, in some way. That's, you know, I, I, um, Mel Brooks himself said that it's impossible to get even with the Nazis in a very, like, one-to-one -one way. So the way to get even is through, you know, comedy. And... <laughs> Yeah, then there's a joke about, oh, no, Danny's also eating it. I mean, he didn't, he clearly, yeah, he's, he's chewing on something, but <clears throat> the hot dog that he's holding hadn't had a bite taken out of it. It was like, I guess, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going off on, like, you know, prop departments work extremely hard, but that was, uh, yeah. And so obviously the the actual physical presence of the, the cops are not played by Etten. But the voices we the only voices we hear, and we hear like two or three, they're all Etten. So or Honest Madison. So so that's yeah. <laughs> He, he really does play every character here in, in one way or another. And I like it. So, they, they, yeah, in, there's that thing about, you know, the time is, you know, it's 1605 and you're arrested, you know. And here is like, so, looks like the time is, has, has reached 1605 and you are under arrest, you know. So, it's this, yeah. And, you know, var variation on it. So, five minutes into the episode and everything has been resolved. That just feels, you know, which, like, considering there's also the title, there's the, the intro sequence with the, the, the um, cast, and you had the, the opening. Yeah, it's, mo it's probably more like maybe four minutes, maybe only three and then the last chunk of the episode, uh, there's ten minutes left, which I think about one minute of it is the, the very end titles. So, not quite ten, but nine minutes of just Christmas celebration. That just feels 
after all this build up you know the the and let's see yeah and then we have the um, um yeah so they're at yeah they're at the the dinner table passing out presents which yeah i'm not sure that hits the same if you're not in in denmark but we kind of like we don't eat and hand out presents at the same time although i guess i can imagine americans probably don't either but yeah you know it's supposed to be two separate you know same day but not at the exact same time. And I, you know, Randy really feels like she's just a, a mouthpiece for Honest Madison here when she's, you know, obviously you're not supposed to say, the, you know, because, and it is, you know, like, ah, oh, you know, you gave me a present. What is it? Like, obviously the person isn't supposed to say, you know, it's one of those dumb things. It's, it's like if you're watching a movie and there's and something cool happens, so you turn to your friend who's sitting next to you, did you see that? Like, you know, it's it's obvious. It's I guess it's it should be rhetorical, but I don't know if it's always meant as you know. It's yeah, um, you know, it's just obviously it's not that that you think that your friend wasn't also watching the screen, and it's not that you actually want the gift described to you before you open it. You know, it's just an expression of, you know, oh, I'm so happy you gave me a present. I, you know, I wonder what it is. And, you know, oh, wow, wasn't that a cool thing we just saw in the cinema? And and she says, oh, it's, uh, I don't know, an Adidas jacket. And it is an Adidas jacket. <laughs> just, you know. And, yeah, so, so he gives Randy candy. And in, you know, she's, her, her character is very immature. She's, she's love, you know, she's, she's not like, Candy, I'm, I'm an adult. You know, she's like, oh, Candy, you know. <laughs> but then he says, so, so yeah, I'm going to, the, the Danish term is, and the, I, I'm not sure you have that. I'm not sure, I think that might just be a Danish thing, or at least Scandinavian thing. The direct translation is, Shut up, hard candy. And the idea is that they're so big that you can't talk while you're eating it. You know, and you kind of have to make, you know, do you want candy or do you want to be saying something that's going to annoy other people kind of thing, you know. But that, we can clearly see the contents. Like, I, I guess maybe they were expecting it to come in a, in a you know, because... You know, it's been some years since I bought candy myself, I guess. I don't know, 15 years, probably. Usually you do get it in, like, a bag that you can't see through, you know. But, yeah, again, you know, prop fail, and the contents are clearly not Hukif Bocha. So it's like, I mean, just, yeah. Um, let's see. And, <clears throat> yeah, they talk about all the money they got. They sold the guns, which is like, wow, Danish police must be truly terrible at their jobs to not have gotten the, the guns. That's, yeah. And for once in flashback, you know, Papa actually says, you know, I love you. And then we're told, you know, well, afterwards he did say, bend over so he could hit me, but, you know, didn't want to spoil a flashback on Christmas and let's see yeah when Vivian is given you know pork she you know she, she grabs it and then we hear like we hear these like animal noises so she's still very dehumanized and then we get the the title song which you know the the show has been teasing us with from the very start because they only play part of the chorus during the you know and not like not even the entire chorus just the the I don't think and anyway the, it's it's very repetitive in the intro sequence to to all 24 episodes 
And so we have this thing, I suppose it's not universal for all Danes, but some Danes, now I don't even remember the saying, but I think it's something like, if it has fins or wings, you can eat them with your fingers, which in Danish, fingers and wings, vinga or finga, basically rhymes in, in Danish, you know, so, so yeah. But he's eating pork, which has neither. So you know, it's it's this thing, they, and and it's very common to eat pork in in Denmark. On you know, if if you're if you're Christian, you're you're probably eating pork on on Christmas. Or you know, it might be you know some some eat like duck or or the like. But they make a point to say you know this is you know, and he's also like picking the pork rinds off, which like. I mean, I realize, you know, so, some people remove those with, with a knife and fork before, but he's, it seems like he's not even going to eat them. It is just, yeah. Anyway, um, then we have, yeah, I quite like the reaction to, to Anna. You, you know, it's like, yeah, sure, Anna, go ahead. You do some rap. It's almost like a, a charity thing, like, probably can't rap, but let's, let's humor him. And he really busts out a, a quite good verse. And, and, like, Danny looks like he just, you know, like, like, Anna is walking on the ceiling or, or something. Just completely, you know, just, yeah, that was, that was quite fun. And I, I do maintain, you know, it's not going to be rap for everyone, but I do think that everyone has it in them to just go, you know, just unleash and just be, you know, be yourself. We're all taught to, to really repress a lot so this is a fun you know and he's very like he's been very uptight up to this point and at the very end he swears which i think would hit harder if he didn't use the f slur in the episode before this one and he mispronounces you know he says p let's see, puff diddy which is not one of the acceptable ways to say his you know it's it's Diddy, P. Diddy, Puff, Puff Daddy. Those are the, I, I believe, all the acceptable ways. So they made sure that he got it wrong. So he's back to being a dork. And I've never understood why, like, it's clearly supposed to be funny. But why is it supposed to be funny that Danny, <clears throat> like, he... I guess the joke is that he doesn't recognize a potato when he sees one because he's so used to not eating properly. Right, that's the joke. I guess I don't think it lands that well. But yeah, you know, he he put a potato in his mouth. You know, it's not like he had his eyes closed and someone else put a potato in his mouth or something. And he spits it out and says, oh, it's a potato. And Anna says, you don't like potatoes. And, you know, I, th I think Anna should have said, don't didn't you recognize it as a potato? I think that would have been funnier. I love how eerie the the garage is. And, yeah. Um, the fact that it act they actually end it, you know... <sighs> the, the big... You know, right, yeah, and right after, it, the, the archaeologist even says, Merry Christmas, you know... That's a very that's a very subversive way to end uh, an advent calendar by having the protagonist accidentally set off a nuke. You know, it, it's so this kills every native-born Danish character on the show, which does make this one of the many many times that Etten has Honest Madison has attempted but failed to retire the character of Stuart Stardust. Like it's almost every single time he brings him into something that he tries. And yet he keeps bringing him back later because it's a very popular character. So all of the Muslims on this show are depicted as terrorists when you could easily have had at least the measly model minority. The only non-white character in the entire 24 episode run who is opposed to Islamic terrorism is the Mossad agent, which, you know, in real life the Israeli government is brutal towards Palestinians, so maybe don't make a hero out of someone who works for the Israeli government. And, you know, in real life, countless immigrants from the Middle East are against Islamic terrorism and call it out. There's not a, a lack of 
moderate Muslims calling out Islamic terrorism, there's a lack of Western white people being honest that it's happening. There's a lot of racist, conservative, I suppose I don't have to say both of those words, white people here in the West who claim, oh, you know, where are they? They're, you know, I'm actually, I'm gonna, there's a, I want to say his name was Sean, is Sean, he's still around. He did a really great video where he talked about, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in the, in the description box, the video where he talks about the, the, is it just called, yeah, the video is just called Moderate Muslims and Terror Attacks. So the, let's, uh, gonna put it, gonna put it here. There we go. So, um, right, right. So, yeah. Other than the actual Nazi, the Muslims on the show are the only characters that are never humanized. Even Igor gets some in song, like some other ones. Like, as, uh, you know, as, as misogynistic as his song is, like, it seems like he actually did love some of these women. You know, you, you get the sense that the, the, you know, yeah, in part it was because he wanted to have sex with them, but it comes across, you know, and yeah, even Stuart's dad got some humanizing, you know. Stuart sounds good in the one about his hot dog, hot dog stand. He's doing his best with what he's got. Danny and Auntie sound good when they sing about loving each other on in his blues song, but the Muslims never get to, you know, they're either lying in order to commit terrorism and you know pr pretending to be nice even though they actually hate them which comes out here near the end you know i th i think episode 23 you know kefia yeah says some some really you know and and i think it actually i think it's supposed to be like the equivalent as if you know i th i think we're supposed to think oh no he's racist as if he has any kind of Anything resembling the institutional power that, yeah. And the, the, uh, let's see, what was the thing that I wanted to say? Uh, yes, yes, those, that's one of the, the things. And the other is, yeah, expressing actual hatred. And then after on a song saying, oh, you know, the, you know, yeah, making amends, which, you know, just, yeah, as I mentioned in my video on episode 23, it's really messed up that that's at the, you know, it's like, oh, you know, if only these Muslims had Christmas, then they wouldn't be terrorists. It's completely just, my God. And let's see, right. So because they made the decision, which I can imagine was for how cost effective it was when it came to time in the editing bay, that every, every single episode have the exact same intro sequence. That means that by the time the this episode was past the intro, the audience... Right, this was supposed to go in episode 23's video. Anyway, yeah. Um, no, that, that's right. I put it here because it's by now we know it's every single episode. Anyway, yeah. Um, by the time episode 23 starts... You know, the Andy has seen the audience has seen Andy punched in the face twenty three times in addition to the one time in an episode, which yeah, and and by the end of episode twenty three, she's been punched another three times, and let's see, yeah, and we also we see Kifia's sinister face when all is revealed twenty four times, so that's again. You know, I remember 2003, there was a lot of anti-Muslim, you know, hatred. And, yeah, uh, so somewhat mentioned earlier in, in this video, the episode is kind of a letdown. There's so much buildup in the episodes preceding it, especially like the last four or five or so. And then this one features such a quick resolution. They wanted room for a song, but most of that song we've heard before, you know, this is... This was not the honest verse, verse is new, but the rest of it, the first two verses, they changed like one line or something, and it appears to be a re recording. 
but you know it's been out for for years by this point you know the, it's there's some chance that this show wouldn't exist if not for the popularity of that song and the the there was apparently also an actual christmas calendar i think i i listened through it years ago i wasn't i didn't I wasn't the biggest fan, so I ended up not listening through it again this year. But, yeah. I'm gonna go record the review now, which I... I think it'll probably look like both videos were... You know, the, the uh, two episodes are gonna be made public right after one another, so... I suppose it'll look like I time-traveled.